Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest today is Dr. Alex Capano, the first person ever to earn a doctorate degree in cannabis studies. We'll be back with our interview after this brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs. You have to log into three different websites to place separate orders, and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place, and they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to rupahealth.com, that's R-U-P-A health.com, to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. I am so pleased to welcome Dr. Alex Capano today, the first person to earn a PhD in the science of cannabis. After many years of working as a nurse practitioner, Dr. Capano became fascinated with cannabis's potential to help with a host of issues, including pain, sleep disorders, anxiety, opioid withdrawals, and other things as well. So welcome today. Thank you. Wow, quite a journey. Yes. <laughs> It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so can you please expand on uh, the role cannabis plays in helping with pain, sleep disorders, anxiety, and op opioid withdrawals? Yes. So it's interesting because we understand some mechanisms of action of cannabinoids. So CBD, THC, there's actually over 100 of mo different cannabinoids or molecules that uh, exist in the plant and exert these effects on your body. Um, but there are many we don't fully understand and probably won't for a long time. So we do know that um, cannabinoids work on trip channels, they work on 5-H21A serotonin receptors. Um, they do, they're pretty potent antioxidants and do things like uh, reduce elevated glutamate, um, improve glutathione levels, they work on immunoreactive microglia, they're neuroprotective. Um, so we understand a lot of the effects, uh, but not necessarily how, what the cascade is that causes them. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, they exert effects through the endocannabinoid system, which unfortunately is poorly understood because it's not included in a lot of curriculums. Um, but it is something that is <laughs> confirmed to be uh, true and mm -hmm. exists in all of our bodies, even our pets' bodies, and it's made up of G-protein coupled receptors in the central nervous system and the periphery, and then these endogenous ligands that are actually our own cannabinoids that we make in our body, known as anandamide and 2-AG and many others that are putative, but those are the two confirmed. Mm -hmm. And the, the purpose of the endocannabinoid system, or the ECS for short, is to maintain homeostasis. So it has effects on everything from the HPA axis and hemodynamics to inflammation and immune response, mm -hmm. certainly the sleep-wake cycle, mood, um, even libido, temperature regulation. So when you start to understand that there's a system that has so many different targets within the body and, and has such a profound uh, pathophysiological role, it then starts to uh, make sense and not feel like snake oil that there's therapeutic potential for cannabinoids across so many different symptoms and conditions. 
Okay, wow. So at what point would you recommend to one of your patients to to try, uh, you know, the cannabis cycle? Well, if, if I'm talking about CBD, which is uh, the most widely used because it's federally legal and available over the counter mm -hmm. in every state in the U.S., um, and it doesn't have any intoxicating potential, so it's very safe and well tolerated. Honestly, I would probably recommend it to everyone because of its anti-inflammatory effects and its neuroprotective effects. There's some really compelling animal data that shows um, CBD certainly has the therapeutic value of reducing um, ischemia and, and injury with acute uh, injury like traumatic brain injury or myocardial infarction so we want it on board in case anything happens mm -hmm. um, and we're looking into this in humans certainly but the data is not there yet uh, I'm pretty convinced that not only for those acute injuries but also for hopefully prevention of something like um, cognitive decline turning into dementia, at least prolonging that phase. Wow. Now, I can't guarantee that, mm -hmm. but um, we are studying it, and what we see in animals um, has led to that hypothesis. So it's evidence-based, and frankly, we could all do with a little less inflammation. <laughs> of course, yes. So I know that you're, you've, you're giving several lectures at the 29th Annual A4M World Congress. Would you mind just giving a brief overview of some of your topics and key points for our audience here? Yes, so Thank you. the first was called Canna Confusion, or is called Canna Confusion, and it's actually about the regulatory landscape, whether we're talking about higher THC cannabis, which is legally considered marijuana, mm -hmm. versus low THC cannabis, which is considered hemp. Um, what's legal federally, what's legal in your state, um, what you may need to do as far as registration to recommend these products, how to vet them, and um, really the history of prohibition, which is actually just a very tiny window in human history. Um, so I'm not a lawyer, but I am just <laughs> sort of steeped in this regulatory uh, world every day. So it's important for all of us to know we have to protect our license, protect our patients, mm -hmm. um, protect our practices. And then I got to get into the stuff I am really good at. Um, so I was speaking about the application of cannabinoids in gynecological disorders, both malignant and non-malignant. Um, from everything from endometriosis and, and different pelvic pain disorders to gynecological cancers to, um, honestly, skin care and beauty, because I think that's important too. We, you know, we want to feel confident and feel of good. Of course, yeah. And then lastly, I discussed the potential for using cannabinoids either as an alternative, an adjunct, or a tool for opioid use and withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're looking at uh, different options for pain management, um, ways to help people titrate down, ways to prevent people from being on them, and then, then also, um, for substance use disorder, which isn't the same, but there's some overlap, um, there's some really nice data that shows that cannabinoids can actually help uh, with substance use disorders, including opioid use. Um, so do you have any uh, recommendations on how to vet certain companies, just uh, in particular, just to make sure that it's legitimate? Yes, <laughs> yes. and that's an excellent question because this is not a regulated industry. Um, so it's not considered a dietary supplement, a food product, um, or anything yet from the FDA. Mm -hmm. So that lack of regulation allows really anyone to enter the market and at any given time. There's probably about 3,000 brands out there. And wow. they may be um, putting out a quality product, but all too often they're not. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it is up to us to, to vet companies. and. Um, the most important uh, aspect is to look for either a full spectrum, which means it has a little bit of THC in it, or a broad spectrum, which means it has other cannabinoids but no trace of THC. That's important for someone who 
um, may be subject to a drug test or just doesn't want any THC in their body. And those are different than just isolated CBD. So isolate CBD um, certainly has therapeutic potential, but it's not a shelf stable and you typically need to use about five to 10 times more than you would a broader full spectrum. Mm -hmm. So less is always better, right, mm -hmm. for anything. Um, so look for full spectrum and broad spectrum. And then secondly, ask for a certificate of analysis um, and then really vet that certi certificate. Look at that COA and make sure that it's comprehensive and shows not only potency, mm -hmm. that you know, what they say is in the bottle is actually in the bottle, but also that it shows comprehensive purity tests for everything from heavy metals, mycotoxins, molds. Um, these are plants that are going to pull those contaminants from the soil, mm -hmm. which is great for the planet, but we don't want it in our bodies, so it shouldn't be in the end product. Um, and make sure that whoever issued that COA is a reputable lab that has ISO certifications in those tests. And also, this should be obvious, but I've seen um, this not happen. It needs to be lot specific, and then products need to have their lot numbers on them so you can really match the testing with um, the product in your hand. So lastly, it should be readily available. You know, companies should be transparent and make it easy. Um, some of them, if, if there's a QR code on the bottle and a lot number right there, you can just scan it with your phone and find it. That's mm -hmm a really good sign, mm -hmm. um, but you shouldn't have to really chase down a, a quality COA. That's a red flag in itself. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, you might have to do a little research, but it's yeah. even better in the long run. It is. <laughs> and then, you know, when you find uh, a company you feel safe, secure, that they've got really good quality assurance, then just stick with them. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing all that knowledge. It's been a pleasure talking with you. You too. <laughs> thank you.